family of Nabiha al Kadria, who was killed by her abductors after her parents failed to meet the deadline given by uh, those abductors for ransom to be paid, has confirmed the release of her four sisters. Nabiha, her sisters and their father were abducted on January 2nd from their home at Zuma 1 on the outskirts of Buari town in Abuja. Tragically, an uncle of the deceased, Abdul Fatai, who led a potential rescue mission, was killed by the bandits. Although Mr. al Kadria was later released to go source for ransom, sadly his daughter Nabiha was killed after the family could not raise the ransom within the specified time. Family has thanked Nigerians for their prayers and goodwill, which includes a fundraising initiative for ransom. Meanwhile, the police operatives say they successfully rescued the victims around Kajuru Forest in Kaduna State. Also released were seven abducted victims from Sangwari layout. Rice News has this exclusive with Mr. Al Kadria. It was on the 2nd of January. I, think I came in around uh, about 7 o'clock from town. And uh, moving straight to observe my evening prayer, that is the Mago prayer. And thereafter, I think I sat down at the sitting room there just for me to relax. Then thereafter, I observed my Ishai prayer. After observing the Ishai prayer, I was not feeling too okay for me to take my dinner. So I was feeling very weak that day. And now I asked my daughter to prepare a small pub for me. So thereafter, I took the pub. I couldn't even take it. So I went in straight to the bedroom. I was just relaxing, pressing my phone. I was telling my wife, I'm not strong. I don't know what is happening. Then my mood is, is not OK. So after some time, I doze off. So the next thing I heard around the noise was just coming as a who is banging the gates and I asked them because my children were in their various rooms so I was like ah, who is banging the gates who is knocking this one is not knocking they are banging it they say they don't know I stood up and I went I came out it's an uncompleted building anyway I just fixed about three rooms there just for us to move in we're moving not up to two months now and uh, so I came out, I went straight to the sitting room, the main sitting room of which we're still working on, to check, I peeped from the window and I sight one man standing by the, by the main case. So from there I noticed this uh, arm robbers then. So I haven't sighted then, I've already made up my mind as well. If they have come, there's no problem. And I notify my wife, yeah, it's like they are arm robbers. So like they have come. So I went straight into my bedroom. My children too have already, have already locked up their rooms, in their various rooms. I went in straight to my room, switched off the lights. My wife rushed to the bedroom, we switched off the lights. I picked my phone, trying to see who I call, neighbors around. My memory was like, I was confused. But along the line when I Organized myself, I was able to pick myself up and say, Let me call my brother. And I call my brother. And I say, Abdul Fatai, where are you? I say, There's a problem. We are being attacked now. I'm robbers, thief, like that. Within 15 minutes, I call back. He said, Bros, I'm close to you. I say, Okay. So I was a bit relaxed. The guys have already sighted them by the window. They've pulled the window. They've break the glass. I knew they were in full force. There is nothing I could do that for me to like surrender myself to them. <clears throat> and I asked, I said, Kai, what is it that you need? Whatever you need, come in. I came out, opened the door. One got me and asked me, Inagudi, Inagudi. I look at him. I don't have money. But if you see anything here that is good for you, pack it at the British. You look at me. You search everywhere. I notice you are looking for money, checking some things like that, of which 
they pick the things that they, they top probably they could go with. I I was just looking at him. Because he didn't tell him I think there was one rope that I used inside the compound for at the back there. He picked the rope from my room. The next thing I I saw him coming out was to tie me with that rope. I knew well, I'm the suspect. I gave I gave up. I said, okay, let's go. He now marched me out from my room <coughs> to the balcony in my room. And then my children too, they've already break the door. They've used this long uh, jigger in my comp. They pick the jigger from my compound. They break the door. They've get their entrance to my children's room, march them out like that. I saw my children, myself. I said, okay, let's go. Their intention was to lead us out of that community to the main road that goes to Veritas. So I was having the confidence that at least between that time, is that the police will come or the other security people will come that will make them to leave us and run away. When I noticed my brother was driving in, I was happy. He was the one that actually lead the police to my community. Hmm? So when I cited this guy, I said, Kai, this guy, as at that time, they had already positioned themselves again. When they said that they were coming, they didn't know who was coming, but they saw the police light on. So they, they knew quite all right, these guys have come for them. So on seeing that, I said, Kai, there's nothing I could do. And I tell my children, I said, relax yourself. And I said, all of us should lie down. And I said, and I tell my children, I said, just go down. I said to I hide myself on the floor. Just from then, three of them up went to there's a a building not far from the main road. It's fenced. There's a gate there. They went to that building, but three of them were trying to gain entrance to that building. I was seeing them using harrow and all sorts of things to break the security lighters so that people will not see them from a distance. So they break all the bulbs outside the security lights outside trying to climb the the gates inside. So it was then they start to exchange bullets. And I saw my brother that he wanted to drive further. So he didn't know that they were close to that house. So the next thing he did was for him to reverse back. Which that the reverse that he did, I believe they must have shot him. So the police vehicle to got stopped. So his reverse could not go back. So I now, they were all exchanging uh, uh, with themselves. So after a few minutes, both of them stopped. I think the police stopped. They can't advance further. And I now say, Kai, they must have injured my brother or injured the police. For the police vehicle not to advance further, meaning that they cannot stand these guys. So thereafter, they get, they've been able to recoup themselves and get their strength that they, they have uh, injured these people. You know, ask us to stand up, go back to the village, take another route to get out of that place. The ransom, how came about the ransom? Uh, particularly the demands. Have they made any demands when they contacted you? I was at their camp when all this ransom of a thing was coming up. You know, that night that we we went through the bush. It took us like eight hours, 30 minutes with my children. I was not wearing any slippers. I was wearing knicker. My sports wear with t-shirt like this. So, as at the time we were going inside that bush, one of them tried to like make a fire. I was trying to make friends with one of them. So, Aboki, Zona Dala, Zona Dala. That one was not trying to, in the sense, I speak Yoruba. So, I was just trying to communicate to me in Yoruba. I was like, Come now, come now. What do you need? What do you need? Don't, don't, don't treat me like this, please. What do you need? And I say, say, low. You have money. You have money. But you low. But you move. Wah, low. I'm just speaking to Yoruba. I'm just speaking this. And I say, okay, okay, okay. I say, if it's that one, don't worry. I'll get. Yeah. So we got to one stream. It was very deep. They asked us to enter inside the water. My children, all of us, we went inside there, passed through there, climbing one hill like that. Then I said we should stop. And I said that they are starting to look for firewood like that. 
mean the instruction they prepare their food there that night. Maybe whether they please baguette or something like that, Sham. Because as at that time the vast was myself they asked me to kneel down. So one of them now came close to where I knelt down and asked me, bros, another the guku, I mean Mino Uku. I said, where do you want me to get three million? He gave me a slap. Another one came again and gave me another one. Like that. The one which is gone hit me at my back. And I said, okay, no problem. We end that talk. After they take their food, they ask us to relax for like 30 minutes. We now went back on another journey. So another journey, that's maybe second lap. So I'm getting to another... It took us about three hours again, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. They asked us to stay in one bush, lie us down, that we should sleep. Of course, I enjoyed the sleep. Just maybe 30 minutes like that, inside bush, grass like that. My children too. Some of them that carry maybe their, their night uh, wrapper like that. And they managed to cover me with their under that they come, let's cover you. We did that. So after 30, 40 minutes, they asked us to stand up. We now begin the final lap. So the final lap, for all to get to the, the main camp, where their camp is, where their leader is, there's a big stream and one big mountain like that to climb. So they asked me to cross with two guys with their rifle following me. The guy that was holding my hand, the rope was still inside. He was controlling me with the, with the rope. So I followed him. And I look back to check my children at the bar. I said, Kai, six children. Where are they taking me to? I hope they are not going to kill me. Where are they taking me to? I just want more courage and ask that guy. I said, oh boy, Nibolan Law, where are you taking me to? He said, bros, Baba, don't worry now. I want to go and meet her. I said, I'm feeling cold. He now asked the guy to give me my, they pick one duvet for my house that night. So the, one of them used it to cover himself up. And I said, I'm feeling cold. I'm not okay. I'm not strong. That I'm not strong that night. I'm on medication. He now pleaded with one of his colleagues. He said, you should bring that duvet for me to cover myself with. So I used that one. I was going. I didn't see my children coming. I was like, ah, what is happening? And I said, what of my children? He said, Baba, they will come. They will come. They, what are you doing with my children? He said, Kutubi, 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 Kutubi. Just shouting on me. I said, I'm not comfortable. I want to go back. He said, no, you cannot go back. After 30 minutes, I sight my children coming up. So when I sat there, I was happy. And that's why they now assemble us again. So the guy... I was telling you, I tried to pick as friend, was like to lecture me, bros. I'm a poor Just cooperate with your God. But our God will release you, so you go and look for the ransom. I said, okay. I said, okay. I said, come. But I don't have money. I'm a civil servant. He said, I'll go and leave that one. You go and look for the money. I said, I'm a civil servant. I just moved into that. It's not up to two months. My children are... I earlier explained to them that if they see the parlor there, nothing is there. There's just the room that we manage to, to enter. Not up to two months. We have been staying in a rental apartment for long. They asked me to go and sit down, relax, of which I did. After a few minutes, they called me. That the leader wants to see me. The leader seeing me was to ask me, Zona. I've seen their stick in their hands. I kneeled, knelt down in front of the leader, asking me all those questions about. Megidaya, I said, Lapi, hello. He said, Do I know where I've come to? I said, I know now. Okay, soldier, I said, Me, I'm not. I'm not a soldier. He was just to know where I said, I'm, I'm just an ordinary civil servant. The house you see me staying there is for my brother. He just asked me to come and occupy the place, and it's not yet completed. He said, okay, 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 okay. One came from my back again and gave me, used his boots to hit me. He now started to negotiate. He now asked me how much can I offer. I said, 
I don't have money. But I can look for maybe two million to come and give you. Maybe three million. That's how we started. They say I have not talked. I should count my children. I'm talking of two million, three million. I should be very careful. Then I start. I was not saying ten million, five million, five million. Five. I said, where will I get the five million? My children, I say, Daddy, don't let them kill us. Don't let them kill us. You should be very careful. <laughs>